break the rock into aggregate. The broken rock would later be hauled to the site and, in a batch plant, mixed with cement to make concrete for the dam. August 1967, and on both sides of the steep canyon, the solid rock to anchor the dam lay fully exposed. In the river bottom, carpenters began laying the first wooden forms to shape the big concrete shell. The first bucket of concrete on September 13, 1967, would be followed by the last one, 22 months and 350,000 bucket loads later. It would take men, trucks and equipment, just short of two years, working around the clock, to pour this massive monument on the Yuba. high line moving from side to side on rails, radio controlled, swung each bucket into position where it was needed. Pneumatically driven vibrators settled the concrete. A network of water lines laid across the pour at each seven and a half foot level cooled the concrete as it cured. At night, mercury vapor lights strung across the deep canyon like strands of pearls turned dark into day and the work went on. At the dam, in the tunnels, at the powerhouse downstream. The men rested, went back at it. New men came on at the end of the shift. And the dam began to grow.
Upstream, lumberjacks were dropping big pines, cutting them up and hauling them away to the sawmill. The agreement with the Forest Service was that the reservoir to grow behind the dam would be cleared of all obstructions to within 15 feet above the water line. Eleven months after the first bucket of concrete was poured, men moved into the big diversion tunnel with reinforcing steel and formwork to seal it off with a mammoth concrete plug. Now it was up to the still unfinished dam to handle the Yuba by itself. powerhouse would incorporate two of the largest impulse turbines in the world, producing 284,000 kilowatts of electrical power. In the winter of 1969, a few months before the dam had reached its full height, the Yuba came up again. But the threat of another flood became only a dramatic picture. Second, 1969, and the official final bucket of concrete swung down from the batch plant for the traditional topping out ceremony. I want to recognize on behalf of the joint venture contractors that built this project the wonderful craftsmanship that you see here that was produced by the various unions and particularly by their members, the tradesmen. These are the fellows that really did this job. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the many subcontractors and the fine job that they did. And all of those people that worked so hard in bringing this project about months ahead of time. The dedication of this Yuba River development brings us certainly to the end, the climax of a most significant accomplishment. This project has come to reality through the vision and the enterprise and the cooperation of many people who will reap its benefits, not only for themselves, but for the people of California. It's this cooperation that's brought Yuba County an invaluable source of hydroelectric power a storage basin for the floodwaters that have plagued the lower areas for so many years, and a recreational site that can be used and enjoyed by all Californians. The benefits that this magnificent structure will perform will, of course, include flood control, as the general has referred to. It will include water supply in the lower areas of the Yuba River, much of which is still to be developed. It will include, very importantly, the generation of hydroelectric power to provide for fishery enhancement, provide for recreational opportunities, I think that are unsurpassed in this northern part of the state. The echo of bulldozers, rock drills, and big machinery has long since faded from the steep canyon at Bullard's Bar. Today, visitors to this colossus on the Yuba marvel at the expanse of graceful concrete slope with scarcely a thought of the army of men in boots and hard hats who clawed out a place for it, then built it up block by block from the river bottom. Boaters and water skiers crisscross the big lake behind it, heedless of the old dam now more than 300 feet below in the clear cold water. A mile across at the mouth of Willow Creek, the reservoir offers recreation seekers 4,600 surface acres of water, 55 miles of shoreline, 
bounded by the Tahoe and Plumas National Forests, with miles of hiking and fishing trails through the adjoining wilderness. Downstream, temperature-controlled water regulated by multiple level releases at the dam creates one of the finest salmon spawning gravels in the state, attracts shad and steelhead in the spring, and supports a hardy year-round population of rainbow and German brown trout. Warm water skimmed from the top of the reservoir benefits crops during the irrigation season, and the farmer is now assured of a steady source to support a varied crop, an expanded growing season. Still remaining to be done when the dam was completed was a system of canals and reservoirs to distribute the water across the countryside. But now there was water. Water, thundering down the penstock to turn the giant turbines. Water power to produce electricity for home and industry. Water, held in check now to serve the land below never again to rampage, ravage, and ruin. Water, that was the need, and the problem, and the reward, and the story.